Hi, welcome to Max tutorial number three. First patcher in Max. So, here we are with an open window in Max, and we have not done anything let yet. But um, let's get to know Max. That's our real um, uh, chore today. So, um, I'm just going to walk you through it. This is the uh, patching window in Max, and it operates in different modes. I'll get to those in a minute. But you'll notice that around the picture frame of it, if you will, there's things across the top and across the sides and the bottom and across the other side. So along the top here, what we essentially have are the parts that we're going to use to um, patch with, that we're going to build stuff out of. So all the objects and messages and comments and various things are up here. Along the left-hand side is more or less um, uh, media and other things. Um, uh, you've got your package manager that's uh, to go and get... Um, well, packages sort of have a complete set of objects to make certain things work, but uh, file browser, objects audio, video, meaning audio and video files like music and uh, video, um, images, snippets. That's little parts of code, like if you make a little piece of code that you find particularly useful, you save it as a snippet. Uh, plugins, um, hmm, I'm not quite sure what that could be. I can think of a few things, but um, we'll probably never get to it. Uh, Visi, they're pre-made components that do stuff. Um, We'll look at them later on in the course, and also beep, same thing, and collections. Okay, so th this is sort of pre-made stuff, audio, visual, or pre-made tools that you can use. Across the bottom here are, um, the, these have to do with the functioning of Max. This first one is probably the most important thing to know on Max. This changes it from being in unlocked mode, and you can see it's unlocked now, to being in locked mode. And when it's in locked mode, it's running like a machine. When it's unlocked, you're building it. Get to that in a second. Um, this is a new feature in Max 8 that allows it to actually run while it's unlocked. Um, not important to us yet, but maybe later. And this is presentation mode. When you want to make a nice looking machine that has um, a sort of showy quality for when it's working, you use presentation mode. Um, and these other things are um, just sort of various, you know, you can make a new window, you can put your grid in there or not. Uh, debugging, I've never been able to debug anything. This is a new, um, a new feature in max 8 which is it allows you to map to your midi um, objects um, and this is assign keys from your keyboard to do certain things uh, we used to have to do those things manually by programming and now they have done it for us i will get to use that later thank goodness so coming around here to the last side um, this is audio here but we don't have any audio objects so we can't turn it on and off some important stuff here. Um, this is a search function, um, you know, okay, it's good for searching for things. This is the inspector. If you have an object or a thing in here, the inspector tells you about its parameters and how you might want them to be working. This is a reference that tells you what sorts of um, messages you can send to something, etc., etc. And this is the Max console. It's, whoops, sorry, if you click on any of these, it turns into that, but we don't have objects selected for these two, so I didn't realize, uh, I wasn't thinking it was going to close. Um, the Max console is what, um, it will tell you if there's any errors, if you've done anything wrong, but you can also send things to the Max console to print, and we will get to that in a minute. And then there's also this snapshots, which is kind of a higher level function for saving all the settings that you put on something. So let's let's just dig right in here and start with three really, 
really simple objects. Um, they get used all the time and they're sort of different looking and that way we can learn the visual language of Max. Um, this one here is the comment and you can see when I put the mouse over it that there's the letter C next to it and that means that not only could we just drag it down here and we have a comment I'm, I'm typing now there it is comment um, we can also just click over here and type the letter C which I'm about to do now wham and a comment box appears and Comment boxes are really just sort of for labeling things. Even when you're doing regular programming, um, sometimes they put like a, uh, an, uh, I think it's a backslash, but it might be an asterisk, depending on the programming language, and then you put a comment in there to remind yourself of what on earth you're doing. So there's a comment and another comment. Maybe we'll get rid of one of those. We'll get rid of another comment. Um, then write over here we have the message um, this is a often used object and it has a specific look to it and you can also see that there's a letter M next to it when you see those letters that means if you have your unlocked patcher window you can just type that letter M the message box appears and then you can type well I'm just typing message into it for now now I realize at this point that I've gotten myself in some trouble, but uh, you'll see that in a minute. So a comment box is transparent, and when the window's locked, it has no border at all. You can just see it now because the window's unlocked. The message box is that dark gray, it's rounded corners, white words, and that way you can just tell it's a message when you see it. You don't have to scrutinize it too closely. So now we're going to talk about, um, this gets a little tricky, but it's just called the object. And you can see next to object it says the letter N. So I'm going to type it and then make a very sort of um, apologetic explanation here. In Max, truthfully, everything's an object. But there's some specific objects that you see over and over like comment and message that look different. They have their own graphic user interface kind of look to them. The object box is for all those other things that don't. And humorously, there is no object box called object. So we're going to have to just use a, one of the simpler ones, the metronome, which you get by typing M-E-T-R-O. And that gives you a metronome and you'll notice that it has an autofill so as soon as i was typing it says oh metro do you want to output a bang message at regular intervals like a metronome you know tick tock tick tock or bang 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 yes that's what i want and it's highlighted highlight so i can actually just um, hit the return key or the space bar and it will continue with the metro now i'm going to hit return uh, not return space bar and then you'll see this next thing comes up and it says arguments. So the metronome is what it is. And then there's a kind of a, a setting that it's going to start with, which is usually called the argument. You can change the argument, but the, but the setting that it starts with is often called an argument. It's telling you argument one It's the interval, the number. So I happen to know in a metronome that it um, this number is in milliseconds so I'm going to type 1000 okay 1000 one thousandths of a second is one second now this might be a good moment to learn a little tiny bit about the inspector okay so if I highlight this object either by clicking on it or by uh, clicking and dragging over it to get it lit up like this, I can then hit the inspector. And the inspector gives me, um, th this is uh, worth noting here, there's basic, there's layout, there's recent, and there's all. I like to have it in all. I like a nice, I like to know everything that's going on. 
So the inspector is now telling us about its appearance. Are you going to hide it when you lock it? Are you going to include it in the background, include it in presentation? Here, where is it? Well, you know, there. Uh, this tells you where it is in coordinates on the computer. Um, you can change the background color and the border color. Um, that might be fun to do. Maybe later, not today. Um, you can change the font. You can change the font size. Blah, 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 blah. You can have it start automatically if you want to. You can have some strange... So, but you'll see here, interval is already set at 1000. That's because I typed that in there. It doesn't have to be in milliseconds. It can be... Oops. <laughs> it can be in... This is hard to read. It says HH colon MM colon SS. Hours, minutes, seconds meaning that you have to use two digits for each of those. Also ticks, bars, beats, and units, note values. So it can actually use all these different things, or even samples. Um, and th the number could, you know, it's like inches or centimeters or something like that. The same idea. But it's in milliseconds right now. So that's the inspector. Now let's look at reference. What? So reference tells us, well, what about this thing? What arguments does it have? Well, it has an argument about an interval. And if you highlight that, it usually tells you down at the bottom about that interval. So it gives you a quick little explanation to tell you what it is. The great thing about this program is that it has a lot of um, supporting information. So what messages can you send it? Well, you can send it a bang. That'll start the clock. You can send it an integer, which will turn the metro on or off, or set the time interval. Hmm. Well, it does two different things. How will I know? Well, I'm going to highlight this, and then I look down here and I see, oh, if you send it an integer in the left inlet, any number other than zero will start it. If you send it in the right inlet, the number is the time interval. Aha! I see. So that tells you how to make it operate. Well, so we can go over and actually see that soon. Um, another way that you can learn what things do on your various objects or, um, is to just sort of hover over the inlets with your mouse. And that says, oh, that inlet starts or stops the metronome. That inlet sets the metronome time interval. And what about the one on the bottom? That is the output ticks of the metronome. Now, it's worth noticing here that mostly you're putting input in the top and output comes out the bottom. Let's take a look at message. Same thing. Trigger the message. If you use the word set, it changes it. But that I'll show that a little later. But essentially, this left inlet triggers it, and the right inlet set the message without output. This is fairly consistent in Max. You'll find that the very, very left inlet is the one that will trigger an object, unless it's a special object. And all the inlets to the right of it will store whatever data you have in there, but they won't trigger it. And then the outlet is the message result. So let's learn a new object here. Oh, and a comment. You'll notice there is no outlet on the bottom because comment doesn't really do anything. But if you go up to the top, you'll see messages in. So conceivably, we could change the comment. Um, but we won't do it now. We'll just let comment be doing nothing as it prefers to do. So let's learn a, another object here. And, and the objects are also along here. This is the toggle. And you see the letter T. So I'm just going to come down here over the message, type the letter T. And I'll put it up here. And I'm going to put it... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to put that over the metronome. So I'm going to just connect it to the metronome, and I'm going to move it down here. 
what I want to put um, and then under the metronome we're going to try another object which will be a button and there's a whole lot of buttons but this is the button I want you can see it just has the letter B so I could have just typed B which is normally what I do so you can see right now I move them around right I can even make them bigger I can adjust them and I move them around but they don't actually do anything this is where your lock and unlock come into play or the patching versus run mode come into play so it's unlocked you're patching you're building stuff now we're going to click this lock and you'll notice it sort of cleaned up and there's you can't see the outlets anymore now I'm gonna click on this it's called a toggle and you see the X is lit up and you'll also notice that this button is blinking 1001 1002 1003 1004 1005 so 1000 milliseconds it blinks once every 1000 milliseconds and now I just toggle it off and it stops so the toggle whatever it is it's putting out is causing this thing to turn on and off how could we find out what the toggles putting out well we could put another message here now I could just type the letter M um, and that would do it or just because I'm trying to show you shortcuts while I'm doing this I could hold down the option key and click on this and drag it I am sorry PC users I do not know what that is in PC it might be control click and drag but it might be alternate click and drag okay so now we've taken this and we've duplicated the message and we're dragging it down here and you remember the left inlet sets the message so let's see what happens if I connect to this left inlet and I'm gonna I'm gonna lock the patcher but I'm gonna use a key command which is the command which is the Apple sign and the letter E and that will lock it okay and now I'm going to turn this on so what's flowing out of a toggle is just the number one and when I turn the toggle off it's just the number zero so that's all it does one and zero very binary you have to love that so um, so we can see here that just as mentioned before um, with the metronome start and stop the metronome if we highlight the metronome again um, and we ask about the turning on and off of integers turn the metro on and off in the left inlet any number other than zero starts the metronome um, and zero stops the metronome okay a bang will also start it and then over here um, we set the time interval well uh, let's learn about that if we want to put a number in there we can um, Boink. these are our numbers this is an integer this is a float meaning it has a decimal point and this is a signal number it has a little tilde sign so what we want here is an integer number and you could just push the letter I but I'm just going to drag it down here now that I'm up here okay and I'm going to click down here and then I'm going to look at this outlet output incoming or entered number and I'm going to connect that by dragging down to the input of the metronome and now if we lock our patcher again we could go down here and hit the lock or command E now um, we can do this while it's running so we can see what happens let's turn the metronome on and we see it's going about 
once a second. Now this is at zero, and you can't have zero one thousandths of a second, so let's turn it up a little bit here to 30. It's actually going so fast we can't see it. Let's get up to 150. It's going quite fast um, because it's... Well, so what would 158 over 1,000 be? Approximately one every sixth of a second. So six times a second. This is blinking now. So if we... Oh, by the way, you change these by... Uh, you click on the box and drag upward. I know you might not be able to see. So there's... Um, 250, that should be four times a second, right? 250 over a thousand. And then if we go up to five hundred, that's every half a second. Boom, 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 boom. And of course if we went to one thousand, that would be once every second. And just so that you know. You can also just click on the box and enter the number by typing. You can maybe hear me typing. That's 2,000. And then when I click outside, it'll transfer that down to the metronome. So now it's 1 Mississippi, 2 Mississippi, 3 Mississippi, 4 Mississippi, 5 Mississippi, 6 Mississippi, 7 Mississippi, 8 Mississippi. So once every two seconds. Let's uh, make it 1,000 again just so, just for the normalcy of it all. Okay, so I think we've sort of learned how the metronome works here. Let's take a look at this here um, message box. And we'll, uh, we'll bring out another... Eh, I always need space to look at things. Um, another object. So I'm just going to type the letter N, and I'm going to type print. And then I'm going to type uh, Abigail. Okay. And then I'm going to connect the output of the, of the message to print Abigail. Now, what kind of object is this? It's a print object. Abigail is the argument. Abigail names the place where it prints. Um, to see what Abigail prints, we would go over to the max console which is still empty here and i just i just locked my patcher command e and i'm just going to press message and abigail says message thank you you'll also notice when i put my cursor over this that print abigail lights up in yellow okay so it tells you exactly where it's coming from so Let's see um, if we made another, I'm unlocking my patcher now, command E again. Let's make another print object and say print Bart. Okay, Bart. And we'll just find out what it is that this button is doing. There, so I, I connected it, and we look over here, and Bart says bang. Bart bang, Bart bang, Bart bang, Bart bang, Bart bang, Bart bang. And then if we um, lock the patcher, I can't turn my metro off unless I lock it, of course. That stops that. Now, one of the things that, of course, you want to know is how to clear all this. So you just push the X, and it clears the whole thing. So now we know what this is saying here at BART, and we know what Abigail's saying. I just clicked on it. There it is. I want to go back to what I was saying before. I'm unlocking the patcher again, Command E, and I'm going to put, I'm going to type the letter B, put a button there, and then I'm going to Option click on it and drag a, another button over there. I could have just typed another B. Sometimes I'm just lazy. Okay, let's lock the patcher again, Command E, and we say bang. It, 
the bang comes down here and activates the message Abigail prints it over here message what if we have the bang over here on the right inlet we push it oh we get the word bang right but nothing happened over here bang 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 nothing unless we activate it by hitting the left inlet bang so now Abigail says bang um, consider for a moment that uh, we can then make another message uh, I have to quickly unlock my patcher and type the letter M and say um, how dare you and uh, um, oh, what else would we like Abigail to say something not uh, so dismissive or uh, let's see um, mm, that sounds right and uh, we could even um, change if we wanted to uh, what Bart says I suppose uh, it gets more complicated uh, we'll just let him see oh here here you go here you go um, another message um, how's the new gun so there we go locked patcher we turn on Bart bang 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 how whoops sorry how dare you bang 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 click oops sorry bang how's the new gun bang 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 that sounds right bang 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 okay I think you get the idea um, as we hit each of these it changes the message here I'll clear this so that you can see very easily what's happening or not happening this changes the message in this message box but it doesn't do anything until we send it out by hitting this side here that sounds right that sounds right it sounds right bang 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 hey take that Bart okay so there you have it that's the basic um, way that these um, objects work and I'm just going to put them uh, whoops put them back where they were I'll move all this stuff off to the side I don't know why I'm doing this I just do it there you go so we have the comment the bang the comment excuse me the message and the object and that's what we did mostly today this is also the button and the toggle so there you have it that is your introduction to max for the day i hope it was informative and i will see you in the next tutorial